Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I want to prove this important theorem that if you have a prime number P that divides a product of two numbers A and B, then the prime number must divide either A or B. Okay. The syntax is as follows, more uh, logic notation. P is a prime, we assume that. And uh, what we need to show is that if P divides A times B, then we need to show that this is same as P divides A or P divides B. Okay, this is the, the, the goal of this theorem. Okay, how do we go about proving this? One idea would be to assume the fact that a P doesn't divide A and show that P divides P and P divides B. Okay, so let's assume P doesn't divide A. Okay, okay, now let's think about what are the prime factors of P. Since P is a prime number, the only uh, factors rather are 1 and P. Okay, so the factors of P are. 1 and p. So we know 1 and p are the factors of p because these two numbers will divide p. Okay. Now think about the GCD of uh, a and p. Okay. 1 and p are the factors of p. That's clear from the definition of the prime number. Okay. What can we say about GCD of a comma p? Well, GCD by definition means a number that divides both numbers, right? So what numbers can we plug in here? One possibility is one, right? One divides P, one divides A. That's clear, okay? What about other number that we can fit here? We can try to fit P here because we know P divides P, but P doesn't divide A because that's the assumption we made here, okay? That means we cannot put anything other than one. Okay. So we have to put one here and now, we can make use of another uh, proposition we proved earlier using extended Euclidean algorithm, okay? Uh, remember this, if you have a number C, which divides A times B, okay? And GCD of uh, C and A is equal to one, okay? Then your C must divide B, okay? If this is true, then your C must divide B. We proved it earlier using the basic division algorithm property and the extended nuclear algorithm concept. Okay, so we are making use of this fact now. Now let's pay close attention to this. We know that P divides A, 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 B, okay. And we also know that the GCD between these two numbers is equal to one. That means we can apply this theorem, which says your number P must divide the remaining number B, okay. This implies P must divide B, which is the goal. If the prime number is not dividing A, it must divide B. That's what we want to show and we did it. Okay. Uh, let me stress one fact that P must be prime for this property to be true. For example, consider the scenario when P is not prime. Okay. Let's say 10, 10 divides 15 times 4, right? 15 times 4 is 60, 10 divides 60. Okay. But 10 doesn't divide 15, 10 doesn't divide uh, 4. Okay. So 10 doesn't divide 15 nor 10 divides 4. Okay. So that's the reason why I underlined this fact. If you have a prime number P and we know that the prime number is dividing a product of two numbers A and, P, A and B, then the prime number must divide A or the prime number must divide B. Okay. That's basically it. Thank you very much.